What is going on guys welcome back in this video today I'm going to show you three ways in which you can use GPUs for free without using your own resources in order to do machine learning so let us get right into it. All right, now some of you guys might not have the most modern hardware, you might not have a powerful GPU, or you might not have an NVIDIA GPU, which means that you cannot use CUDA, uh, which is oftentimes necessary to do machine learning stuff. So in PyTorch, you can use CUDA, you can use CUDA to speed up things, you can use CUDA sometimes, or sometimes you have to use CUDA to run a project or an application. So depending on what you're trying to do, it might be a necessity or it might just be something that you want to have to speed up something. Now, how can you still access GPUs without having one yourself, without having a powerful one yourself? How can you still do machine learning? In this video today, I'm going to show you three ways to do that. And we're going to get right into it with the first one, which is Google Colab. Now, Google Colab is a Jupyter Notebook environment that runs on the Google Cloud. So you don't have to run anything locally. You don't need Python locally. You don't need a notebook note locally. You don't need any resources. You just need to open your browser and go to Google Colab. And then you sign in and you can just open up a new notebook. Now in this notebook, you can choose between different runtimes, you can use a CPU runtime, so you can just run some basic code, or you can use a GPU runtime. So for example, this right here is the Google Colab notebook, I can go ahead and I can print a simple hello world. Now this first of all will connect to a machine. By default, it will be a CPU only machine. So I'm going to say print hello world, it takes some time to connect, then I get access to the machine. And then it says hello world. Now, if I go ahead, and if I import torch, which is PyTorch, what I can do in torch is I can say torch CUDA. And then I can say is underscore available. So this is a function that I can call. Um, and in this case, it will tell me false because I'm in a CPU only runtime environment. However, I can click on runtime here and I can change the runtime type and you can see that I can choose a hardware accelerator, I can go with a T4 GPU, I can go with a TPU, a tensor processing unit. And if it's available right now, I can connect to it. You can see it says connecting, it says too many sessions. Uh, let me just manage the sessions so I can quit the other ones, terminate other sessions, there you go. Let's see if that works. And after it connects to the T4 GPU, I can run this again, import torch, torch CUDA is available. And now I'm going to see that CUDA is available, that I have a GPU that I can use. There you go, true. And I can also say torch CUDA dot. Uh, and I think the function was device count, device count, then it tells me how many GPUs I have in this case, just one. So what I can do is I can say torch CUDA, and then get device underscore name and zero. And then you can see I will get the Tesla T4 GPU. So right here, I can use a GPU to do machine learning with PyTorch, I can load data from Google Drive and so on. And I can also get some more information I can import, for example, PSUtil. And I can say PSUtil dot uh, virtual memory, for example, and I will see how much memory is available. Now I think this is bytes, so you can calculate how much uh, gigabytes uh, that is. And I made some notes here, I don't know if they're up to date, you have to check for yourself if you're watching this uh, later on in the future. But as of right now, what I researched, we have a limitation of 12.7 gigabytes of RAM, uh, about 100 gigabyte disk space, and a notebook can only run for 12 hours at a time, uh, maximum. So you cannot run this for three days and train a model. Uh, in Google Colab, you have to do it in a few hours. So that is one way to do that. All right, now the second way to use a free GPU for machine learning is to use notebooks in Kaggle. So you can just log into Kaggle, you need to be verified for this. And then you can just create a new notebook. And you can basically do the same thing on Kaggle that you can do on Google Colab. So you have a notebook here. And uh, what I can do is I can get rid of this. And I can again, say print hello world. So you will see this starts a session, and I'm able to run a uh, basic Python code. And once this is done, you're going to see that this is also going to be a CPU session. So I can already write the code import torch and then torch CUDA is available is available. And you're going to see that by default, this will give me a uh, false because we don't have a GPU, we don't have an accelerator here. However, I can click on these three dots here more settings, I can go to accelerator. 
and I can use GPUs. For example, we can use a T4 here. I can go T4, turn on GPU T4 times two. Now I can run the code again, it will start a session with the accelerator. And I'm going to be able again to use um, to use a GPU here with CUDA. Now, I'm curious to see if we have more than one GPU because it says times two, I didn't check that, but that would be interesting as well. So it takes some time to connect every time this. Um, yeah, this is uh, the usual stuff here. So I can try now to do CUDA is available. And then I can type torch CUDA and then get device count. And uh, what's this? No, actually just device count, sorry. Device count two in this case. Okay, this is interesting. So I can actually say get device name zero. And I can also do a get device name one, which is also Tesla T4. So we have two GPUs here in this environment. Now the limitations that I wrote down here is also 12 hours for CPU and GPU notebooks, nine hours for TPU notebooks for tensor processing units, 20 gigabytes of disk space and 32 gigabytes of RAM. But again, check for yourself to see if that's still correct. All right, so the third and final option is called paper space. And this option is a little bit more limited than the other two. Uh, first of all, in terms of resources, but also in terms of availability. When you try to get a GPU on Google Colab and on Kaggle, you will almost always get it or you will get it very often. And on this platform, you almost never get access to the free notebook. If you get access to it, it is an option, but oftentimes you won't get access to it because there are no resources left for you to use for free. This is just something that if it's available, it's an option, otherwise not. Now for the resources, you have six hours max per session, you have five gigabytes of disk space and the RAM and VRAM depend on the machine you use. So I can click here on create notebook, you have to log in and all that. Uh, then I can select a template, a PyTorch notebook, for example, and then I can choose a machine to work on. Now you can see we have a lot of paid machines here, which are obviously not what we're looking for. And we do have some free machines in terms of you don't have to pay per hour, but you need to be subscribed to the pro tier, which of course costs money. And there's one machine here, which is the option that I'm talking about here, the free GPU machine uh, with eight CPUs, 30 gigabytes of RAM, eight gigabytes of GPU, but of course, uh, not available right now. So it's at max capacity. So if you get access to it, you do have a free notebook, you do have a GPU that you can work with. But usually it's not going to be available, especially compared to Kaggle and Colab. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.